Techniques for solving logarithmic equations, 7.4. Uh, we've worked with numbers and expressing numbers in different ways already. So before we go, a note, note. Any positive number can be expressed as a power or as a logarithm. So any positive number can be expressed as a power of any other positive base. I'm going to leave a little gap there to put a couple examples. Or a logarithm of any other positive base. For example, we could take the number 4. In order to express the 4 as a power, we could say that it's 4 to the power of 1. We can also say that it is 2 to the power of 2. It is also 16 to the power of a half. It is also equal to 10 to the power of the log of 4. There are several different ways that we could express 4 using powers. It is, the, it is equal to 10 to the power of the log of 4, because this would be a base 10, um, which would make... I'm not even... I'm not going to explain that, because I'm not going to do a good job. And we can also express any positive number as a logarithm. So 4 can also equal the log of 16 base 2, because 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. It can also equal the log of 81 base 3. Basically, any time that you need a an exponent of 4 in order to get your base to equal your value here, then it's equivalent to 4. So another example is the common log of 10,000, because 10 to the power of 4 uh, equals 10,000. So 4 is the exponent that is required to get 10 equal to 10,000. So all different ways of writing uh, the same number. And this is very helpful when we're solving equations that involve exponents and logarithms. Okay, example one asks us to solve the log of x plus 4 equals 1. We're solving for x, and we're going to use two methods. So method one is algebraic reasoning. So if we have the log of x plus 4 equals 1, um, we can rewrite in exponential form using base 10. So this is the common log. So we can rewrite in exponential form. This is saying that 1 is the exponent that I need to raise the base 10 to in order to come up with x plus 4. So we're just rewriting, rewrite in exponent form. Well, 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10, so all I really have to do is subtract 4 from both sides, which leaves me with x equals 6. And this is a little bit backwards, we can just rewrite it. x equals 6. 
The second method is to draw a graph of what's happening. So in order to draw a graph, we're going to uh, graph the left side and then um, and the right side and then see where they intersect. So in order to do, the, to do this, we're going to have two graphs. We're going to have y1, which equals the log of x plus 4. And we're going to have the graph of y2, which equals 1. So in order to graph this guy, log of x plus 4, I'm first just going to graph our standard logarithm, uh, which goes through the point 1, 0, and 10, 1. So I can draw that comes up here with an asymptote at x equals 0. And then he curves really hard. And there he is. And x plus 4 means I need to apply a horizontal translation of 4 units to the left. So this was 1, 0. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 units to the left which means my asymptote is going to be here at negative 4. And we're going to move this point 4 units to the left, which will be bring us to 6, 1. We'll say it's right around there. And now we can draw our translated graph. So this blue one is y1. I'll erase our first one there. Don't need it anymore. And then we also need the line y2 equals 1. So the point 1 here. The green line is y. 2 which equals 1. You can write that y1 equals the log of x plus 4. And now we can find their point of intersection. Well, because the standard point that the original log function went through, this red one went through 10, 1, and we moved it back, then this point that we used to draw y1, our blue graph, was actually 6, 1. And if y2 equals 1, then it's going to actually cross right through that point. So we can see that the point of intersection here is 6, 1. So the x value uh, where they intersect is x equals 6. So x equals 6 is a root, is the root of the equation that we were asked to solve. Example 1b, the log with a base of 5, and then in brackets there, 2x minus 3 equals 2, and we are going to solve for x. Um, the first thing that we can do is we notice that we have a log with a base of 5 on the left side. We can actually express the right side. We can express this number 2 as a log with a base of 5. So what we're looking for is a number. Um, that has that we're going to take a base of 5 and we're going to raise it to the power of 2, uh, and that will be the value on the, of the log. Sorry, that was not said very well, but it'll make sense when I write it. So 2 can also be expressed as a log with a base of 5. It's the log of 25 base 5, because 5 to the power of 2 is 25. So now on the left and right side, we have a log with a base of 5, which means we can take that out of the, uh, we can express it as an ex in exponential form. Mm. Nope, that's wrong. Which means we can just take out this log of 5. So we're on the left side, we have 2x minus 3. On the right side, we have 25. And now we can solve for x. 
add 3 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 14. In example two, we are going to apply factoring strategies to solve equations. So A gives us the log of x minus one, it's common log with a base of 10, minus one, is equal to negative the log of x plus two. And our goal here is to solve for x. So the first thing that I wanna do is isolate the logarithmic terms on one side of the equation. We are going to isolate log terms. So I'm going to add this right side to the left side and I'm going to add one to both sides as well. So we're going to be left with a log of x minus one plus a log of x plus 2 is equal to 1. The next step is to apply the product rule of logarithms. The product law of logarithms says that if I'm adding two logs with the same base, then I can multiply those logs. So we have the log of x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 1. And that was the product law of logarithms. Next step is to expand. So we're going to uh, use our FOIL. So we're going to expand what's inside the brackets. We're also going to express the right-hand side as a common log, but we'll do that next step. <clears throat> so here we have log of x times x is x squared, x times 2 is plus 2x, and then we have the inners, negative 1 times x is minus x, and negative 1 times 2 is minus 2. I'm going to group those terms uh, at the same step as express 1 as a common log. So on the left side, we are reduced to the log of x squared plus x minus 2. And on the right side, we have the log of 10. 10 to the power of 1 is 10. So 1 is equal to the log of 10. Uh, now that we have a log of the same base on both sides, I can simply take away that log function and we're left with x squared plus x minus 2 equals 10. I can express as a quadratic equation in standard form. It's going to be our next step, express as quadratic equation. In standard form, which means I'm just going to subtract 10 from both sides. x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. And now I simply need to factor. So I need to find two numbers that will add to positive 1, and their product needs to be negative 12. So I've got x plus 4, x minus 3 equals 0, which tells me that the roots of this equation are negative 4 or 3. So x equals negative 4, or x equals 3. And that is how to solve a logarithmic equation by applying factoring. Looking back at the original equation, though, 
we are going to need to rule out one of these values of x because it will be an extraneous root. It will be undefined. So if we were to put negative 4 into either this first log or the second log, actually, the log would be undefined. We can't take the log of a negative number. So x minus 4 is out, and the only solution is x minus 3. So when you get to the end of a question, you need to check if that root actually works. So if it's the log of a negative number, it won't work. Example 2b says the log of the cube root of x squared plus 48x equals 2 thirds. The first thing I want to do here is get rid of that cube root. So I'm going to express it as an exponent. I'm going to express this cube root as an exponent. So this is the log of x squared plus 48x to the power of 1 over 3 is equal to 2 thirds. And because of the power law of logarithms, I know that this expression on the left is equal to 1 third times our log. Now I can multiply both sides by 3. I see that that will get rid of my denominator. So I can multiply both sides by 3, leaving me with log of x squared plus 48x equals 2. And now I want to use my the fact that I can express this number 2 as a log with a common base. See if you can figure out what the log is going to look like on this side, uh, it's going to be equivalent to 2 with a common with a base of 10. So this side will still be the same. How can I express 2 as a logarithm? Pardon? To equal 2. So basically what we're saying is the base is going to be raised to the exponent of 2 in order to get this value. So it's basically 10 to the power of 2 equals 100. Now that both sides are in terms of a common log, I can lose the log on both sides. We've got x squared plus 48x equals 100. And now I'm going to subtract 100 from both sides in order to express it in standard form, quadratic form. x squared plus 48x minus 100 equals 0. And now I need to find two numbers whose sum is 48 and whose product is negative 100. And those two numbers are positive 50 and negative 2. Of x plus 50, x minus 2 equals 0, which means x equals negative 50 or x equals 2. And now I need to check these two uh, to find extraneous roots. An extraneous root is a root that uh, is impossible, it won't work. So for a valid solution, the argument uh, in the top has to be positive, and the left side must equal the right side. We're going to check uh, x equals negative 50. Okay, so we're going to take cube root of negative 50 squared plus 48 times 50. Uh, I can already see that this is going to be a positive number. 
uh, but we'll we'll work it through. So this is equal to the cube root of 50 squared is 2,500. 48 times 50 uh, is 2,500 minus 100. <clears throat> so it's 2,400, which equals the cube root of 100. Now this is a positive number. This is all good. Uh, then we need to check what happens when x equals 2. So when x equals 2, we have the cube root of 2 squared plus 48 times 2, which equals cube root of 4 plus 96, which equals cube root of 100. That's good. Seven point four homework page three nine one numbers one through three five six and ten. 